Uh, right, so I first met today's guest uh, when net bowling at Sydney Thunder in 2017. He was very generous with his time then, uh, as he is now today, um, when he let me pick his brains. He had an amazing journey into professional cricket, growing up in Pakistan and ended up playing international cricket for Australia. He's sought after all over the world for his services in T20 cricket, uh, playing in the Big Bash, CPL and the PSL, just to name a few. Uh, so welcome to the Spin Badger podcast, Fawad Ahmed. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Pleasure. We've been here in planning for this for a long time, but yeah, with the, with the season difference, massive time difference, you know, it's getting winter over there, summer now here, and plus um, with, the, with the playing uh, uh, schedule, and, you know, CPL, and then now at home. So, yeah, but yeah, at last we're here. We're talking about leg spin, so yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely in different times. I guess I uh, finished my season not too long ago and you're about to start the, the Big Bash and stuff. So definitely in, in different schedules. Um, so start right at the beginning, that's all right. So I just wondered like, well, I think first of all, like, I remember listening to the, uh, the Howie Games podcast of you on that I thought was absolutely amazing. And any listeners, I'd also recommend listening to that because it's an amazing story of your, um, I guess your journey from Pakistan to Australia and everything that happened. But um, just for listeners, you know, What's a brief overview of like your upbringing, um, how you started bowling leg spin, and then I guess a little bit of your journey into playing for Australia? Well, like um, pretty pretty much like, you know, two older brothers, uh, uh, very um, uh, boys, you know, culture at home and playing like in, at home and then in the, like a backyard cricket plus uh, in the, not much in the school, but on the street and then, um, I was actually playing, uh, we playing hockey was very famous in Pakistan, especially in 80s and early 90s or mid 90s. And when I was school, I was really young. And then like by mid 90s, I was in uh, high school and then we middle school. Uh, we, we more follow like the English school system. So I was in the middle school in mid 90s. And then I was playing more hockey with my older brother and my the eldest brother was playing cricket. Uh, he was he finished already school at that time. So the main thing was like I was very young when I watched uh, Pakistan uh, winning 1992 World Cup and and Pakistan won the 1994 Hockey World Cup. So in, there was both one was in Sydney, the other was was in Melbourne. So Australia was pretty lucky to to Pakistan at that time. But yeah. Um, okay. Cricket field was well high because the next World Cup was in Pakistan in 1996, and those four years, you know, like getting ready. Uh, there was, I think, second time the World Cup was in Pakistan, but color cricket, you know, more glamour. Cricket was getting bigger and bigger. You know, it was in in India and Pakistan. I know it was already big, but hockey was very famous, you know, in those two countries. But then cricket took over at that time, and yeah, just just like everyone else, you know, then. Like when it's soccer World Cup on and everyone just talking about soccer, we're playing soccer here in, in Australia at the Aussie Open time, you know, everyone playing, you know, like a tennis, you know. So it's kind of a just just with um, uh, what was happening around. And and then I was playing no cricket ball, no cricket stuff, just on the street, you know, and, uh, or somewhere, you know, like on the, on the fields and playing with a tape tennis ball. And, doing everything, keeping, padding, fast bowling, left arm, left hand, everything, you know, because used to with the back in the backyard cricket and playing everything. And then um, when the World Cup was on, you know, after World Cup was finished, that was the first time when I watched Shane won, I was just copying him and with the tape tennis and I was just like, using i can't use the same grip anymore but at that time i do remember you know with a type tennis it was pretty hard because that's pretty light and there no don't no seams either so i was just trying to spinning the ball at, in the backyard and then going out with my mess on the street and on the fields and just trying to spin it hard and it was working and then in like a late 90s when i joined college finishing school and uh, we do go so year 10 and then now year 12 so 11 and 12 then in college and then after that we go to uni so that was the actual time when I started playing with the cricket ball and I couldn't land it it was too big too 
too heavy for me, you know, and then slowly and slowly and gradually I tried to learn how to land the ball. And yeah, just from there and it was kept going because in the college when I played my first game, I remember, I don't remember how many runs I gave away, but I remember I took three wickets and I bowled really well. And then I thought, oh, I can bowl. But I know the wicket was pretty, uh, pretty supporting, you know, but the spinners was like a kind of unprepared. So it was spinning big and I thought, oh, I can play. I might be able to play on the bigger stage and something just got into my head. And then from the under-19, you know, uh, divisional and the provincial under-19, I went to, almost went to the Pakistan under-19, you know, to the camp. And and at that time, and then divisional cricket, like a three-day cricket after that. So, yeah, just kept going and going and going. And then I got my debut in, when we where we didn't have any um, like a playing rights for our district. So we were playing alongside another district, you know, and they were like the kind of a bigger district. So we couldn't get much chances for our boys, you know, from our district. So, but then I performed really well on the under 19 level, on the college level. And then they picked me for the, um, for the first class team in 2015. That was the first time when I played first class cricket, but it's just, just same like the way I played for Australia. It was like, like a dream, you know, I played, I bowled only four overs in the first game and then I got dropped for next four, five games and then I played another game and then I missed out six, seven, eight more. Then I waited for three years more to play another first class cricket, you know. So, uh, yeah, it was tough uh, struggling at that time because uh, in the meanwhile, I've done my master as well in international relations. Was studying to just to get away from home, you know. So the mom can say, "Okay, you are studying," but the actual thing was to play cricket, you know. So <laughs> not actually studying, but yeah, I was okay in study. So uh, pretty happy. Done my master in, in international relations, and political science, and then I loved the subject, and then was kept going and playing cricket, you know, and then played some. We have some department of cricket back in Pakistan, uh, like Pakistan Railway or the bank, the National Bank, bank and yeah, banks there. Yeah, so they have their own team, and I played for one uh, fertilizer company and then auto refinery oil company, and they were like a different teams. I played around here and there, great to cricket, you know, the three-day cricket, and then uh, I played for Pakistan Custom in 2009 when I. Uh, that was the second time when I played first class cricket. And I bowled really well that season. We play, I played only five games. And I managed to take 21 wickets or 20 wickets in five games. And I, I, and we played only one one innings because our team was not that strong. So we were getting out <laughs> twice yeah. easily. So we lost all the games. And I bowled in each game in one innings. But four wickets in an inning was pretty happy. Uh, after a long time, I played first class cricket. And then... After that, I moved. Uh, uh, I moved to to Australia in 2010. So I got a contract in uh, 2010. One of my friends, he played a season uh, in country New South Wales, uh, far from Sydney. It's called Griffith. Uh, I don't even. I don't even. I don't think so. They still playing over there or not? So that club just disappeared after that time. Yeah, I couldn't make it uh, uh, in start of the season. By the time I got my visa, I was pretty late. And the president said, oh, you cannot play because the rules are you have to play five games before uh, uh, getting into the squad and playing in the finals. And then I stayed in Melbourne. So, yeah, there was a little bit, you know, background. How I played cricket in Pakistan. Um, honestly, I really wanted to play Play, play for Pakistan, play good cricket, you know, and then, you know, with the time, your cricket itself, you know, and maybe the youngster, they're watching, you know, that might be a case in, for them as well in the future, but I know you always want to play international cricket. Every cricketer got the same dream, you know, when they want to play professional cricket or when they're coming up, you know, when you play in the pathway system, you know, but end of the day, dreams come true as well as for some of them, for they play for 10, 15, 20 years for their country, you know, or someone will just come play a few games and they will disappear, but not from, in, just only from international cricket. And then they will just stick with a four-day cricket. Now we got franchise cricket as well. So, you know, 
time to time in, in Australia, the dreams came from nowhere, uh, played, um, was playing for Hopes Crossing, Scott Victorian Turf Cricket Association, you know, you from nowhere. I was, yeah, so I was bowling. I were, um, um, I were broadly played as well. So Stuart Broad played in that, uh, yeah. uh, in 2005 for that club. And yeah, I played in 2010 and 11 for Hoppers Crossing Cricket Club. And from there, from nowhere in 2011, I took like six, seven wickets in each innings in every game and training with Aussies and Bush Rangers. And I thought I might be able to play at least a, one or two games for Bush Rangers. And from there, it just went off. You know, it was coming along taking wickets, you know, first game seven wickets, second game six wickets, and then I just, yeah, went on and this, the next thing was to come on to an English tour uh, yeah. for A tour, and then there was Asia's on, then I went to South Africa, bowled really well, took the most wickets, you know, you and some really good bowlers were there in, uh, in Australian A side, you know, Davy Warner was there, uh, Finchie was there, Maxi was there, um, Cools was there, so a lot of good players was in that side, but I took the most wicket in four days, and then we played our triangle one days, and that's the dream, you know, just, and then after that, I never played again, you know, that was 2017, long time ago, almost seven and a half years now, and then, yeah, getting into 2015, you know, getting into the squad again, and then after that, you know, realized I can't make it to the test squad, and then sticking with the white ball cricket, you know, and playing T20 cricket, so, I'm just grateful, you know, whatever I have achieved and what I, what I, whatever I'm achieving along the way, just winning the CPL, you know, I thought, yeah, can't be more grateful and thankful because people are struggling to pay for their bills, you know, and to, to survive. And now I'm getting, I'm getting paid a good money and playing the most important thing, what we love playing cricket, you know, and taking wickets and winning trophies and, you know, man of the match and, that's what all matters. So he's been phenomenal, you know, like I'm I'm so grateful and thankful, you know, like I'm living like as a professional cricketer, the life has been it says in Australia it could be worse, you know. So it's been amazing and I love bowling. It's been, you know, I still go next door to my house, you know, two streets away and just go there by myself and put some cones there and stumps and, and I bowl like for two, two hours and 300 balls, 250 balls, you know, I love that, but like, even when it's jumps, when it's come to leg spin, I said, well, when it's not coming out nicely, I said, okay, I'm going to keep bowling when it's come out nicely. When it's coming out nicely, then I said, then I tell myself, okay, it's coming out nicely, keep going. Yeah. So in both ways, I find a way to keep going, you know, so, um, yeah, I, I would go, a little bit back, you know, when I started playing uh, sheer cricket and I said, what's, you know, when you look at the international cricket, there are some, they are special in some way. Uh, in a way, like, they, you have to have something special, you know, like, um, being a leg spinner, I thought, you need something special to play on the next level and especially you want to survive on the sheer level and I thought, okay, there is one thing I can really, uh, manage myself to get to that level and was consistency that's the you are leg spinner and that's the the toughest thing you know you can ask any leg spinner you know and you can tell even if you ask anyone who played against me in sheer cricket or even now in in t20 cricket you know i don't bowl bad balls you know um i, I told myself i tell myself you know you can, i can get hit for six three sixes in a row but the batsman have to make an effort, you know. Mm -hmm. He will have to do something special to hit me for six. I'm not going to give him a freebie. I'm not going to pull banger, no half crackers, no half volleys, you know. Nothing like those things, you know. So every ball, stock ball, close my eyes, everything, I was going to pick in that box, you know. And that I have, that's why I will train one, um, like Abdul Kadir, uh, Mushtaq Ahmed. They, everyone told me, you want to play test cricket and that was the first word from Warney uh, when I was training with him in uh, he, was, he was playing for Melbourne Star and that was 2010 and 2011 2010 something and he said oh you 
I was that was the, actually the first time when I met Warney and I didn't say hello. He's a you know big big fish, yeah. and yeah. I thought he might he might uh, uh, he might don't give me any response, you know. So I went straight to bowling with him in the net, and I bowled a couple of balls. You know, the one went through the gap, and the other one, I said, okay, left hander, and next ball I bowled a wrong one, and he came to me, he says, um, hello, I'm Shane. Yeah, and so I just got stuck, you know, couldn't apply to him. So uh, I was so excited. And then he said, and I said, any any advice, please? And he said, you've been bowling well, I can see. You got all the toys in your pocket, you know. He said, if you want to play for Australia, if you want to play, he didn't say play, play for Australia, if you want to play test cricket, red ball cricket, bowl 300 ball every day. He didn't say anything, you know, your action or how mm. much you're spinning the ball and listen that he says, find a way, spin as much as hard you can and bowl 300 plus balls every day. So people say, oh, workload or you will say stress factors for youngsters. Oh, uh, this, is a, this is a really good advice, you know, being a leg spinner, I've been bowling for almost 20 years now. Let go. If any youngster listening or watching this, you know, go man and ball as much as you can, regardless, you know, if that's the best time when you are tired, when you are fatigued. When you bowl 30 overs in an inning, in a first class game, you you need to bowl those, how you bowl those first 20 or 15 hours. So make sure you bowl the same way those last 10 hours as well when you are fatigued, when you are tired. When you can't go over the box, you know, your right leg can't go over the box. When you're dragging it, you know what happens. You're bowling short balls. You don't have controls. You can't get that beautiful shape. Even sometimes you don't get spin. But if you are taking box, you know, in, the, in your gather and in your stride, in your follow through, you know, in your jump, when you kick the box, you will get that good shape in the air. And then something will happen and batsmen will make mistakes, you know, even if there is no spin. So, yeah, so make sure everyone, uh, all those youngsters, they are listening, you know, hopefully it may be one, just only one. And if you are listening, right, if you're watching, just go and bowl as much as you can, you know, if you want to play for England, if you want to play for your county. Yeah, that's so much amazing stuff there. Um, a lot to go through, but I think that, that bowling a lot has actually been quite a common theme. Like I think in this in the modern era of sports science and stuff, a lot of people are quick to say, oh, you know, you should watch your workloads and do that kind of thing. But I know from my own personal journey and probably resonates even more, like speaking to, uh, I spoke to Kesh Maharaj and he was just talking about how much he bowls and, you know, the day before a test match in Sri Lanka bowling 30, 40, 50 overs at training just because he really wanted to nail it. So... I think that's been a really key message throughout basically everyone I've I've spoken to. Um, yeah, like you sp- spoke about so much brilliant stuff there. Um, going back first of all to the like, I guess when you were really young, saying so you didn't bother cricket ball until you're what like sixteen, seventeen, about that was it? That was pretty old and got like a swollen because of it was just maybe in the water for a long time or you know outside and. It was too big, so that was yeah, that was the first time when I, when I got the, to feel the cricket ball. Yeah, well, I think again, like message for any young spinners listening is that you know, there's never any excuse in terms of facilities. Like you can always find a way, whether you're bowling in your garden, you know, like I'm sure all the work you did bowling with a tennis ball helped. You know, like you're saying you had to really spin it, spin it. That probably laid some pretty good foundations when you did get to bowl with a cricket ball. So, I think you know. Yeah, I was. It, I was Oh, actually, actually, that, that that's a good thing, you know. Like I was actually almost making. I've already played first class cricket in Pakistan, you know. By the time I was coming to Australia, trust me, I was still bowling on the fields, you know. And there is no one, no cricket ground. There's still no cricket ground there where I'm from. I was just bowling to the wall. No one was there. And you guys are lucky if you are a leg spinner, you know. You don't need anyone, you know. You just can go in your backyard. You can go on your street. You can go with the tennis ball. You can go with a plastic ball. We can you can go with a rubber ball. You know, you just need to just roll your wrist. You know, you, that's that's the habit. You know, and I would say sometime. You know, I know revs are very important to to spin the ball. You know, there are a certain amount. If you more than twenty five thousand revs, you know, if you produce more than twenty five twenty six thousand revs, 
the ball will spin enough, you know. And mm-hmm. if you go further, like Shane Wan and McGill, they were around 28,000, you know, something like that. So they were the big spinner of the ball. So if you if you're going over 25,000 breaths, you know. But there is another thing as well. It's more of the controlling the wrist as well. So where the rev's direction is, you know, sometimes you produce revs, but wrist is not in control. It's going more over or more going more on the sideways. So it's not going to spin. And especially when you, move, when you go around and playing in a different condition. So in subcontinent, you have to go side spin. You can't go over spin. It's too slow. They're going to come and smash you. You know, you have to go quicker side spin. Best example, Yasir Shah. He's so good in those conditions because he's ball quicker through there, side spin, and that's why he's taking so many wickets. But when he comes to Australia, he struggles. He went for three or four times, 200 in one inning. Mm. Three, four times in the last two, three trips. You know why? Because he bowled so quick and he bowled side spin. When you bowl side spin here in Australia, you're getting nothing. And they are like concrete. They are so true wickets. And everyone can come and smack you. Yeah. So you, you you have to learn the art as well. But I'm saying, when I say go and you can bowl with anything, it's good for, to control your wrist. It's best the best way when you bowl a, a different type of deliveries, but with the control. You know what you want to do. You know, like a, it's it's kind of a thing. I would say execution. Even with the leg spin, you bowl that big, you that big, small, medium, and big. So you know how to control, how to bowl a small leg spinner, medium leg spinner, and the large, the big one, you know. So to control the wrist, because wrist is not like fingers, you know, you can control more. It's kind of getting a habit. When you want to get in a habit, as I said, you have to bowl a lot. So when you close your eyes, so your wrist is pretty used to, it's not like this. It's just like a lock of the door. It's called this way. This is leg spin. And this is how you control and go this way. And you can bowl bigger spin. If you bowl, if we can spin the ball bigger, in a, especially with the red ball cricket, even with the white ball cricket, sliders, zooters, flippers, wrong ones, all are going to be very, very effective because they know it's spinning both ways. If you are spinning little, you might be good in white ball cricket because they don't have much time. They have to make a uh, quick decision because not many balls like in T20 cricket why Rashid Khan is one of the best in the world mm-hmm. because he spin both ways but not really big but he's quick through the air but on the other side 24 ball only and the batsman doesn't have enough arms so they have to make mistake more but in test cricket they can just wait yeah. they can play him all day but then they can play him really well you know and he might struggle in one day in test cricket. He's still very good, but that's my opinion. You know, like in one day in test cricket, he's not that effective like the way he's in Tony Tony cricket. So in that way, if you bowl with anything, uh, without any facilities, you don't need much facility. You don't need a proper indoor center or beautiful, you know, outdoor facilities and cricket board or anything. You can just train with anything and you can get better. Definitely. I think I remember the um, saying on that kind of the difference between red and white ball cricket. Like I remember the first time I think I really appreciated like what a gun you are was watching the highlights from the Shield final when you got eight for 89 and watching it and you're just like absolutely ragging it both ways and like doing people on toast. Um, But I just wondered for you, like I know you don't play as much red ball cricket um, at the moment, but like, do you have a different approach, like, with how you go about it, like, in your mindset or how you bowl between, like, red and white ball cricket? Yeah, I was, when I was playing red ball cricket, you know, until 2015-16, when I really wanted to play uh, test cricket for Australia, you know, at the next level. And I was bowling from 2013, 2012, 20, for four years, I bowled really well in, in sheer cricket, you know. Uh, almost got to the 200 mark, you know, in the in the first class then. Uh, and the most important thing, as I said, you know, you, is more about the stock ball, you know. So you need, to, you need to be very, very good in your stock ball, you know. I know the varieties are very important, but because in, in four-day cricket is just to, that's my opinion, you know, it could be different to other leg spin or other players, you know. 
But in my opinion, you know, you have to take wickets 80% on leg spin, you know, especially in the top six, seven. Yeah. When it's come to the when it's come to the lower order, you know, in the tails, you can just go bang, you know, sliders or wrong ones because they're not gonna pick it, you know. And they they lose their concentration quickly, they don't have much temperament, you know. And then they're playing like a big shorts, you know, and like those things you can trap them easily. But the top six, seven, you know, I think the best thing, if you have a really good control on your stock pool and you need to find a way what's your stock pool is, you know. As I said, it's it's varies from it's it depends on the conditions, you know. Um, in England and in in subcontinent, in Australia, New Zealand, in South Africa and Caribbean, it's all different, you know. So in until on test level, there is no excuse. You have to be really good to adapt all those conditions as soon as possible. You know, whenever you go there and you have to like this, okay, I will adopt the condition. Fly cricket, it's not spinning. You have to find a way how you're gonna bowl. The best way bowl stump to stump, quicker. Don't give him the anything on the back or let them play on the front foot, let them make a mistake, you know, something like that. So um, my approach was to bowl just leg spin, leg spin, leg spin, and then one or twice in the in a in a four or five overs kind of bowl top spin or slider or a wrong one, you know. Not many times. But the good thing is that you have to have those varieties, you know, you have to work on on those varieties in the nets as well. The you just need to show them, okay, I got a wrong one, but you don't have to bowl. Let them wait because they're waiting. Something's coming. Something's coming. So they're just waiting. So in in my opinion, all those varieties just to keep them on the tracks, you know, so you don't, they don't come and dominate you. But on the other side, they know it's coming leg spin. Then I think the especially the next like shield level is pretty tough, you know, first class level. You need to know how to use the crease as well. So you bowl the same leg spin ball, you know, from close to the stump, middle up the crease, wide up the crease, you know. You create those angles, you know, the batsman heads moving around a little bit, you know. So and in a start when I was playing shield cricket, I was my idea was to quickly to to have a look how the wickets be having. Mm. So the first few hours I will go really quick through the air ball scramble seam with the seam side spin over spin and then you have to find your stock ball at that time so you need to know okay today sometime it's spinning with a scramble seam i don't know why i, I never find out why sometimes it's spinning with the seam and sometimes it's not spinning with the seam sometimes it's just spinning big with the scramble seam and you have to practice both in the net so you can have in Con enough confidence you can go with the both ways and i will go okay the first thing is with the seam proper so it can drift and dip same seam it's not spinning try three four balls with the scramble seam it's spinning today my stock ball is going to be scramble seam and in the in the middle i'm going to bowl once in two hours with the same position so the batsman can think oh something different is coming from his hand yeah, and then I was on. I was on if it spins more with a scrambled seam because if you like again, I'm not a um, biomechanics expert or anything, but say like when it's a scrambled seam, like it because it doesn't drift, it has like less to go against. Whereas when it's drifting quite a lot, to then spin yeah. the other direction, it almost has to spin more. So it's like, yeah, it, you know, it doesn't. It's not as exaggerated as if you just bowled scrambled seam. It's going straight and then just scripts from there. Straight. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, I, I find it I find it better in that way, like uh, uh, especially in T20 cricket, you know, like you want more control. And uh, suppose sometimes some of the batsmen, they're really strong on the leg side, you know, you don't want to bowl with the same position because they're still going to drift. And you bowl sometimes very wide up the out, uh, off stump and then it's goes, still going to the stump, you know, and you yeah. say, oh, what's going on? As I'm, I'm coming to your point, you better go with a scramble seam because it's not going to drift more. Sometimes it's going with the with the spin, you know, it's going opposite grip mm -hmm. and it can stay in the line as well. So, yeah, the best way to find out, you know, if you practice a lot with both seam and scramble position and then you go to the game and you go quickly first two, three hours and is this is about adopting the condition. 
a little bit quicker, over spin, side spin. You bore all different balls in the start, you know, quicker through the air. Make sure you warm up nicely. And then from there, you can just pick your stock ball. So today is my stock ball, a little slower, and I'm going to both scramble seam. Today, my stock ball is quicker through the air, side spin with the seam. Depends on the wicket, depends on the overall conditions, you know. So depends on everything. It might change during the game. It might be varies from second day, third day, fourth day, you know, or on the fifth day, you know, if you're playing test cricket. So could be changed playing. Playing at Waka is completely different. Never enjoyed my four-day cricket over there. The only thing was that Waka was dripped, you know. From yeah. the morning, winds comes from different yeah. side. In the evening, from different side. And I just try to drift the ball quicker through the air, stump to stump. Okay, you can hit me hard, you know. But it was tough at the Waka. So something like that, you know, you just need to adopt the condition as quickly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Talking a bit more about white ball cricket, obviously, like anyone who's seen you bowl in the big bash or whatever, you like knows your googly is like a massive um, strength of yours. Like, what's like, how do you bowl it in terms of like not giving away your secrets to batters, but you know, what for you, like, what do you do technically for, you know, do you have the same grip? Is it a similar action just to get that much spin on your googly? It's not a secret anymore. <laughs> Technology is so much advanced, you know, they yeah. can pick anything from there. So, us, is watch, it? I'm not, I know Shane one is one of the greatest in the history. We all love him. He's the king. He is, you know, unarguably king of the leg spin. You know, he's one of the best in the history. But again, some of the players, you know, no disrespect to Dale Cullinan, you know, like yeah. some of the English players, you know, how they played him, you know. Yeah, like but now if you... you now you go to ball to number 11 and he will pick you like this. Oh, you bought a slider. You bought a wrong one. You bought a zero. Man, how come? Technology. The cricket yeah. has been changed, you know, from, it's not like 90s. I know he was, I still love him. He was still one of the best, you know. But again, um, with the wrong one, I bought three different wrong ones. Uh, one with the wrist, with the same, uh, exactly the same grip as I bought with the leg spin. And the second one, the best one is it's not spinning much, but it's hard for batsmen to pick it. So it's a less spin, but it's from the finger. So I don't I don't go too much back up the hand. So it's just yeah. a flick of the uh, of the fingers, you know. So it just more kind of a top spin wrong one. It's kind of a mix, you know. But again, if you bowl good leg spin, the ball is spinning nicely. The leg spin, that small. Uh, spinning wrong one can be really really effective those wrong ones are are the best you know because you, the important thing to deceive him and if you can deceive him doesn't matter how much it will turn you know and the one the big turn you know you go especially with the pinky show them everything you know back up the hand they can pick it but again if you practice hard you bowl at the good land with a good pace good line they will either depend it or either they're gonna they're gonna get beaten, you know. Same like leg spin, you know. They know this leg spin, but if you pitch that on the right, you know, spot with a good line, with a good pace, they still get beaten, they're still getting, you know, out to their ball. So yeah, the wrong wrong one's got really important weapon, you know, in a, in especially white ball cricket and uh, more specifically in T twenty cricket, because as I said, the batsman doesn't have much time because yeah, they have to go hard on you. It's only 20 overs, you know, and um, they 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 do get like pick some time. They go on the on side. They will smack you for six, you know. But again, the 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 mentality is very important, you know. I, I, in my opinion, with a really good player and average player, there is difference not much with the skill. It's more about his mindset and how he can use his skills. So when I come and bowl to you, I know he's like, suppose if I'm bowling to someone really good, you know, like Josh Butler, and he's one of the best in, in the world in, in a wide ball cricket. But I got him a couple of times, I think, in T20 cricket, and I got him in the one-day cricket as well when I played against England. But I know I got him out as well. Uh, I'm not the only one maybe a little bit scared or a little bit, you know, more naive when I bowl to him. But I have to take that mentality or mindset in the game. Okay, I got him before. He knows I can bowl those those things. 
So when I bought wrong one, I'm going with the mentality. He's not picking, even if he's picking. Regardless, I'm boiling slide or Zudas, I'm thinking he's not picking. And regardless if he picks, you know, I'm gonna keep bowling like those ones, you know. So you need to go with that mentality. Now he's not picking. I'm gonna make him look very poor and stupid, and then he will get out to me. So I think the best way you do I'll practice a lot. So I go leg spin, leg spin, leg spin, leg spin for at least 10 hours. Then I will go to wrong ones. I bought at least five to eight hours, wrong ones, and then I'll go sliders and Zudas and the last the last round would be mixing one leg what two different type leg spin two different wrong ones two different sliders Zudas and clipper i will mix them and then i will go back again leg spin wrong one slider Zudas toppy so like those things are very important so yeah with the wrong one one with the finger and i think the two are the best you know one you show them but it's spinning more and both very effective in T20 cricket. Yeah, I think that's really interesting how you structure your training. So I think that's something that people don't really appreciate is like how, like you said, you've already said you bowl loads of overs, which is great, but how you actually do it, you know, you bowl your leggies to start and then you kind of work for your variations and block and then finish mixing them. Like that's really interesting to hear, I guess, especially just being selfish from a personal point of view, like we're about to start our winter training at some point soon, hopefully, you know, that's, um, it's just interesting hearing how people yeah. care about it, you know. Yeah. So. And, and the, the best thing about, you know, at the end when you're mixing up, you know, like I always find out, you know, when you bore two leg spin, when you bore a couple of wrong ones, and then you go bore either sliders or top spin or another leg spin, I would say, you get a little bit trouble because you bore two yeah. wrong ones, your yeah, wrist is wrist. gone, a little bit used to, you might lose your line, you might lose that pace, you know, because the wrong one and leg spin pace, a little bit different, you know, with the sliders, with the zooters, they're all different pace, you know, like it's really hard to to find the same pace, you know, like uh, that's the best thing I would say, you know, finding the same pace, you know, for each boss. But yeah, I think that's, that's very important. It gives you a lot of help, you know, if you're mixing. So when you're going into the game, you bowl wrong one, wrong one, or sliders, and then you're going to bowl leg spin, hope you don't lose that line or length, you know. Sometimes like we bowl to left and right, you know. So you don't want to go lefty, lefty, and then you play, then you're going to bowl right-hander. You don't, you don't want to bowl on the same line, you know. So if you have a good practice, you know, if you have a good mindset, you can go straight away. Okay, it's now right-handed. I can go on the off-middle lock, so. Definitely. I think like Perfect. about that mindset you're saying as well about like, if, like saying just slightly got him out before. So, you know, you know, you can, you can do a job against him. Like my great mate and mentor Stu McGill who's been on the podcast I know you know him a little bit like he was just say like the hardest batter right when he found it hardest for a batter was when he hadn't got them out before and then as soon as he got them out once he said right I know I can do this now like and he'd always think back to how he got them out and he knew that he could do it so it's just interesting hearing different people's um yeah. perspective on that um like I said I think you know, um, we're not really going to go into your journey to Australia here because that was documented so well on that Howie Games podcast. But more just like as a result of, of going through all that adversity and that journey, like, do you think that when you did, um, I guess, start playing for Victoria and Australia, like, do you think that that journey almost helped you, like, going through that adversity and having like a bit of perspective on, you know, just going out there and enjoying your cricket? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, definitely when I was playing for Hopeless Crossing, you know, then I start, when I start bowling really well, you know, I know there was not even below, it's well below, there's a sub-district and then VTC, well below great cricket, you know, and I was bowling really well. But And then when I start training with Aussies, you know, and that's when India came over and South Africa was coming over and then... Um, uh, then playing great cricket, you know, and on each level I was going and taking wickets, you know, and yeah, the the passion was getting higher and higher, and, and then I would say, okay, it was getting stronger, and I thought, okay, when I when I bowled to Ponting and uh, Watson and Clark and Mike Hussey, and all those guys in nets, you know, and I was uh, I was yeah, not you know, massively getting them in trouble, but I was bowling nicely, you know, to keep them right there on the, on the, uh, on the 
on the road, you know, so so they didn't go off the road and smashing me all the time. And I said, oh, you, you can play well. And then I had a, the whole 2011 preseason training with Bush Rangers and I was going to David Hussey, uh, uh, Chris Rogers, uh, uh, Glenn Maxwell, Aaron Finn, Cameron White, um, uh, Matthew Way, strong batting lineup. You know, they all played for Australia and they were very strong at that time. And Bobby Coyne was there as well. I said, Matt, and there was indoor training session and I was bowling so well, working hard, taking taking a day off from the from the from the work and and just going there to bowl. And yeah, the motivation was there. Okay, if you can get them in trouble because you're not gonna play against these guys all the time. And not all the teams are like this, you know. And I said, okay, even first time when they announced, you know, my name and and uh there was late twenty twelve and early twenty thirteen uh for the South Australia game. Shield game and one day, so we used to play shield game and then yeah. straight back one day. And I was an I was a 12th man. James Muir had had a, his debut in that game. And when I went for the training session, first session training session, when I had a look around, I got a little bit scared. I said, "Fox, how are you gonna make into this court? Like Patterson or Peter Siddle and John Hastings, Clint McCarr, um, Matthew Wade and David Hasib." Chris Rogers and yeah, Cameron White was captain and there were so many good players, you know, Aaron Finn, Glenn Maxwell, Bobby Coyne. I said, Wow, what's gonna happen? You know, where you are. And honestly, at that time, they were talking about 2012, I have never been to the gym before in my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> never had a proper trainer, never had a masseuse, never like nothing I had in my life. I just played just by myself, all cricket, you know, even played first class cricket in Pakistan, nothing. We didn't have any gym in, in where I'm from. So I never been to the gym. It was all natural, you know. The only thing was good for me that I can walk 40 overs in a row, yeah. non stop. And you that was bowling fast, fitness. Right? Yeah, bowling fitness. And that's what I got from yeah. as much as I can bowl, you know. And then when I, when I went to 2013, not 2013, it was 14 actually to the preseason training, I was struggling. I said, oh my God, this is tough. You know, going to the gym and running around and you know, all those things in winter especially. Yeah, it was, it was pretty hard, but yeah, the, yeah, as I said, you know, with the time performing well, motivation was coming along, especially when I played my first game. It was one day cricket, we won a really good game, you know, it was a close game. Uh, John Hastings was the hero of that game. I took three wickets, you know. At that time, we can bowl 12 hours. And each game I bowled almost 12 overs, you know, because I was bowling. I played actually my first game for Bush Range against the English Lions, you know. Yeah. They were touring. That was that was my first game actually. And then I played some like the Ryobi Cup at that time, then Shield Cricket, and just went from there, you know, from Hopper's Crossing to Melbourne Uni to Bush Rangers plus Melbourne Renegades to Aussie A to Australia within eight eight months from Hopper's crossing Hopper crossing to, yeah, to Australia. So in eight months, yeah. Yeah. So and then in mean the in the meanwhile I didn't have any residency, they didn't have citizenship and they said, How are you gonna play? And then Cricket Australia supporting me. Uh, at that time Julia Gillard uh, uh, government, Labour government, you know, they gave me residency and then I went to um, Zimbabwe, South Africa, English tour, got back home from England, I need my citizenship to play for Australia because I was I lived only three years in, in the country, two and a half years actually. And then I went to, uh, came back, got a citizenship, then went on South Africa tour. Then from there, I went to, to play some one day and T20 cricket here. Yeah, no, it's an amazing um, story and, and journey into playing in Australia. Um, I'm at, like hearing the, um, you're a teacher in Pakistan, is that right? Before you moved over? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did teach. Uh, uh, it was a while ago. It was around when I finished my my degree, uh, and there was nothing to do, not much cricket either at that time. And uh, one of my close friends, you know, they were neighbours, you know, and he's actually now the speaker of the National Assembly 
and they have like a private school. Yeah. And um, yeah, next door neighbor, and he said, oh, "You're free, doing nothing. Come and teach kids." And I love teaching. You know, I was I was doing a volunteer teaching already a long time. You know, by that time, so I was already was in like in ten years volunteer teaching every single day. But then yeah, I went to school teach everything to the kids you know it was nice good fun love kids and yeah then after a couple of years or well, after three years and then i said nah that's not my life i can't i can't be there i just want to play cricket and yeah at the end from 2005 onwards you know where i'm from the uh unfortunately with the terrorism with everything was things were really bad you know so yeah. we even couldn't we couldn't play first class cricket for a long time in peshawar in those areas so in KPK, it was pretty hard to play even first class cricket. Even like the people, the players from Karachi and Lahore, they said, well, we don't want to go there. Mm. We don't want to play there. So it was pretty bad at that time. I have to spend more time away from my family, you know, to play cricket, you know, in the different parts of the country. And then eventually I got here into Australia. Well, that whole um, back end of your time in Pakistan, um, yeah, it didn't sound like the best of times. Obviously, very stressful for you and your family and stuff. Um, but, you know, you're saying you, you enjoyed your teaching. Obviously, just hearing you speak today, like your passion for cricket and for spin bowling, like in the future, is coaching something that you'd be interested in? You know, like we were speaking before about how the conversations you have with spinners are probably where you get your best learnings. Like, is that something you'd like to go into in the future? Yeah, uh, most probably, you know, that's what I love. And I've been, I've been coaching around here and there, some, some, some kids, you know, they're pretty young. I, li- I like to uh, coach young kids more. So when they are really learning, like yeah. when they're 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, when they're teenagers, you know, it's easier to coach them, you know, because they don't know much about the art. It's, it's, it's an art, you know, and they, yeah, there's a lot of things, to, you know, you, you can teach and you can coach them, you know, and I loved it. You know, even Cricket Australia are pretty interested, you know, to, to get into the coaching on the junior level as well. So, yeah, there's something I could... Um, I'm really, I really want to, actually, the, the, my aim is really want to come to play in England and hopefully uh, next summer, uh, either in T20 Blast or 100 Ball, whatever yeah. it, it comes, you know, I will take it, you know, regardless. Hopefully I can play for at least a year or two or maybe three years, whatever it is, you know, and then I can get to the coaching. So my aim is to coach there in summer and then come back in summer here to Australia. So something like that would be really good for myself and my family. And it's easier rather going all around the world, you know. I would love that, but I've been traveling a lot for a long time and to give more time to my family, you know, to stick with the, with back, like in England, you know, coaching there and hopefully we'll play for a few years and then I move to coaching and then coming back to, to Australia in summer, you know, so it's, it's pretty, pretty nice, you know, when I have, well, like I've seen a lot of guys, especially like someone like Chris Rogers, you know, been playing county cricket and show cricket for a long, long time, you know, many, many years and just going there in summer, coming back and playing in here in summer. But yeah, something like that would be great. So I can at least cover more kids, you know, uh, to coach them, you know, especially maybe Hopefully more. I I don't see many leg spin coaches in in England either. You know, no, I agree. They, I haven't I haven't seen many leg spinners in the past in the last twenty or thirty years. So so not many around there. So hopefully that would be my my best you know like option as well. So and then coming back home here to Australia and you know, to coaching around here. So it would be great here. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a good point. There's there's a few leggies coming through England now, but I get I think basically all of the leg is coming through, like, um, I, I include my, like, if I include myself in that, like, it's from spending time with Stu and Gil in Sydney, where I say, like, the, the value of having a, a really good, knowledgeable coach is, is definitely massive in, in terms of helping players uh, come through. And you're saying there about the, the 100 and stuff, like, when we're watching the 100 draft, and there were so many overseas leggies that got picked, you know, because yeah. there's so many brilliant, um, short form legs around the world, but, now with um, a lot of international cricket having to be rearranged, you know, hopefully um, for you and I guess also for me, like, you know, there'll be a few teams um, looking to repla- for replacements for those leg spinners. So I guess um, watch this space of what happens in that. Um, just to finish- and I was pretty, I was, I was a little bit upset, you know, when I went, when I saw that, you know, like I think I was the only one 
they you no know, one picked me and everyone else got picked you know all the legs been around the yeah, world yeah so many yeah and i said and i said i've been bowling really well for the last four or five years you know we had a look you know like until end up start of 2020 from 2016 i think from the hour number 7 to 16 uh even rashid khan imran tahir they on the top even shadab khan they are all there on the top but i took the most wickets from number 7 to 16 and i had the best economy as well and i said wow uh you know chance they had you know, been performing was straight back from um, psl to cpl to big page plus even t10 i had a I think the best economy last year in the whole comp. So I went like eight in over or something. So I played with um, uh, Mason Crane. Mason, we played yeah. together. So we, yeah, so we, we had an amazing time. And Mushi was coaching. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we loved it. So. Yeah, I grew up in Sussex. So like, I used to literally walk down from school uh, and go and watch Mushi Bowl. So he's like uh, one, of my, one of my big guys. <laughs> Oh, absolute legend. So yeah, I'm looking forward. Hopefully someone will pick me in the 100 or... E1 just T20 would be great, yeah. No, that would definitely be great to have you over. Um, yeah, so just to finish off, like I've asked everyone who's, who's come on like for one bit of on-field and one bit of off-field advice um, for young spinners. There's, there's been so many amazing nuggets in this um, interview, I guess, but if you had to narrow it down for one on-field and one off-field bit of advice, what would they be? Oh, with the off-field, you know, I would go with the same thing, you know, train as much as you can, you know, go and train hard, you know. We, you guys are lucky you have all the technology you got all the facilities right now you know so you can go and work hard you know someone when the end is there when the people call you crazy or a nuffy you know something like that yeah. if you want to if you want to play on the top level if you want to play international cricket you have you have to train like a crazy you when people are sleeping when people are having rest and I think that's the time when you go and train hard and more than anyone else. On the field, when we are in, in, the, in the boundary line, inside the boundary line, we're all same. There's no difference. Back your skill, that's what's the important thing. You know, back your skill, go with your guts, you know, believe. Because you are there, it's mean you are already, you are already good enough. So you're not going to make just by luck or someone going to come and, you know, push you there and you're up there. If you are, whenever, wherever you play, what level, it's mean you are good enough on that level. Don't worry about what happened in the past and what's going to happen in the, in the future tomorrow. So once you are inside that boundary line, you're playing great cricket, club cricket, county cricket, franchise cricket, test cricket, shield cricket, first class cricket. It's mean you are good enough for that particular comp and go with your guts. You know, I think you're going to smash it, sir. Yeah, I think the believe in yourself and plus training hard, you can make yourself, I think, would say, if you work hard, you can get lucky. Yeah, no, that's amazing advice. But what you're saying about being a, a nuffy, like over here, the English, I, well, I don't think it's a direct translation, but I think the English translation of a nuffy is a badger, which is why it's called uh, the Spin Badger <laughs> Podcast. So I couldn't really think of a better note to finish on finish on so yeah so thanks so much for coming on forward and um best of luck no for the big and everything else thanks mate thank you Aaron, for having me and i hope someone maybe at least one kid i get benefited from this and hopefully hopefully they will become uh better players and hopefully i will come in the in the upcoming summer and you know my friend someone then he said oh watch this podcast and hopefully everyone will watch this and you can get a little bit you know uh support as well so yeah, that would be nice. But thanks, thanks for having me. It was nice to speak to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Farid. Have a good day.